The time slip machine was jacked up unevenly on a pile of household bricks. Two legs were sticking out from under it. Lucinda knew at once the legs belonged to Professor Ninnyhammer because the sneakers were on the wrong feet. Professor, can you come out from under there right now? I have to ask you something and it's urgent. The professor's legs quickly disappeared and his head poked out instead. His face was covered in fluorescent green splotches. Yuck, what is that? asked Lucinda. Transmission juice. Is it dangerous? Yes, it could seep through my eyeballs and turn my brain to mush. Oh, stop playing around, Professor, said Lucinda. There's no time. Professor Ninnyhammer crawled out from under the time machine. Goodness gracious, gracious goodness, what is the matter? My grandma just phoned and she's really sick. So I want you to time slip us to her house, load her in with us, and we'll take her somewhere in the Gospels, say Luke or Mark, and unload her in front of Jesus, and he can pray for her and make her better. And can you please put your sneakers on the right feet because it's just the sort of thing my grandma will notice even though she is sick. Lucinda, the time slip machine needs repairing. There's a hole in the thump wanger, which is why all the transmission juice is leaking out. The professor used his spotty red handkerchief to wipe the green goo from his face. Time travel is too dangerous, he said. We could get stuck anywhere and have no way back. Well, what if I stay behind and you take grandma? The professor shook his head. Well, said Lucinda, I'm lighter. What if you stay and I go? I've watched you work the controls plenty of times. Not in a time machine with a dodgy thump wanger, said the professor. Oh, how annoying, said Lucinda, throwing herself down on the grass. If I could just take Grandma to see Jesus, I know he could heal her right away. She rested her head on her knees. Professor Ninnyhammer looked at her suspiciously. You're not, you're not crying, are you? He asked. No, said Lucinda with a sniff. The professor sighed and patted the pockets of his lab coat until he found what he was looking for. He pulled out a packet of pink bubble gum. Here, he said to Lucinda, chew some of this. No, thanks, professor. I don't feel like chewing bubble gum right now. Then I'll just have to chew it all myself, said the professor, and he put every piece into his mouth in one go. What are you doing that for? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> nope, still not getting it. Professor Ninnyhammer removed the huge blob of bubblegum from his mouth and explained. I'm going to use this bubblegum to plug the hole in the thump wanger so we can take a quick trip through time. Well, what's the use in that? If we can't take Grandma, there's no point. The professor disappeared under the time slip machine with the blob of bubble gum. Lucinda could hear him squishing it into place. When he reappeared, he pulled Lucinda to her feet and pushed her inside the time machine. We have to move quickly, he said. I don't know how stable the thump wanger will be. I've never used strawberry flavour before. Inside the time slip machine, the lights flickered and Lucinda could hear a very unusual knocking sound. However, the professor licked his fingers and turned the pages of his Bible to the setting required. John chapter 4. He placed the Bible in a chamber and pushed a big red button that sent his inventions spinning through time, while a suspension bubble kept them snugly in place. When the TSM stopped, the suspension bubble popped and their ears popped and the door swung open, but only halfway. Like that was all the energy the time machine had left. Lucinda peeked out. This place looks a bit familiar. 
That's because we're back in Cana. Not having to change the coordinates too much saved us power. Goodness gracious, gracious goodness. What? What is it? What do you see? Lucinda, look over there. Now Jesus came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had made the water wine. In Capernaum, there was a certain royal official whose son was sick. When he heard that Jesus had come back from Judea to Galilee, he went to him and begged Jesus to come down and heal his son who was about to die. Sir, the official said to him, come down before my child dies. Jesus told him, go home, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and set off for home. While he was on his way down, his slaves met him and told him that his son was going to live. So he asked them the time when his son's condition began to improve. And they told him, yesterday at one o'clock in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that it was the very time Jesus said to him, your son will live. And he believed along with his entire household. Jesus did this as his second miraculous sign when he returned from Judea to Galilee. We can't stay a minute longer, Lucinda. Let's go. Now I know why you wanted me to see that. Jesus healed the man's son without even going into his house. That's right. Distance doesn't matter to God. Goodness gracious, gracious goodness. Your grandma doesn't need to travel through time to be healed. Jesus can heal her right where she is. One day later, Lucinda found Professor Ninnihammer back under the time slip machine, still wearing his sneakers on the wrong feet. Professor, can you come out from under there? I have something to tell you. When the professor appeared, Lucinda could see he had transmission juice all over his face again. Don't tell me the thump wanger is still leaking. No. Oh, well, I just wanted to tell you that my grandma is healed. We prayed for her last night and this morning she woke up, ate her breakfast and went straight outside to work in her garden. We're driving over to visit her right now and I'm going to tell all about Jesus healing her. Goodness gracious, gracious goodness, that's good news. Say hello to your grandma for me. Would you like to come for a visit? Would I have to wear my sneakers on the right feet? Probably. Hey! Lucinda peered closely at Professor Ninnihammer's face. That's not transmission juice on your face, is it? She touched the green goo with her fingers. Felt like glue. She sniffed at it. It's bubble gum. Goodness gracious, gracious goodness, said the professor, going very red in the face. I just thought I'd like to try the lime flavor. Think about somebody you know who needs healing. Maybe healing for a broken heart, healing in their body, healing in their mind. We're gonna ask Jesus to heal them right now. So let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, you can heal the brokenhearted. You can make the blind to see. You can open prison doors and set the captives free. You know everything, you see everything, and you can do anything. Right now, Jesus, we pray for healing for our friends and family. Healing for their mind, for their body, and for their soul. Amen. Now I'd like you to make a note of what you prayed for, who it was, the time and the day, so that when they're healed, you can give a testimony and give thanks to Jesus. God bless you.